ومنهم أميون لا يعلمون الكتاب إلا أماني وإنهم إلا يظنون إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم <تصفيق> وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار uh, ثم أما بعد to proceed uh, Brothers and sisters, the topic of this lecture is pertaining to reflecting and pondering over the Quran or التدبر, تدبر كتاب الله تعالى pondering and reflecting the words of Allah عز وجل <coughs> لا شك في ذلك there is no doubt that every Muslim and Muslima knows the virtues of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal for indeed <coughs> Allah Azza wa Jal has uh, given the most beautiful of descriptions to his noble book it is a book in which no falsehood can ever enter as Allah Azza wa Jal says لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد يعني لا يأتيه الباطل no باطل and no falsehood can ever enter into the book of Allah عز وجل there can never ever be a description it is a book that was revealed as a hudan bil muttaqin as Allah عز وجل says alif lam mim ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه hudan lil muttaqin it is a source of guidance for the muttaqin it is a source of guidance for those who have taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, he says that he revealed this Qur'an as also a source of uh, azama. It is Allah Azza wa Jal describes the Qur'an as a majestic book, as a kitab an azim. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ And we have given you سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ We have given you the seven <coughs> oft repeated verses referring to Surah Al-Fatiha وَالْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ and we have given you the majestic and the great uh, Qur'an um, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this Qur'an to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi afdal salati wa taslim and um, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this Qur'an in the blessed month of Ramadan as Allah Azza wa Jal says شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ the month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed. So the reason why this topic is important, when I say this topic, I mean the topic of pondering and reflecting over the Qur'an, is because Allah Azza wa Jal has specified and specifically commanded us to ponder over his book. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran." So Allah Azza wa Jal, he asks a rhetorical question. يعني سؤال توبيخي. يعني this is a question of يعني the way Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Do they not ponder over the Qur'an? يعني how can they not, how can they read the Qur'an? How can they listen to the Qur'an and not reflect on the meanings of the Qur'an? And then Allah says, says وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا if this Qur'an came from other than Allah, then they would have found in it many a contradiction. And in another verse, Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not reflect, do they not ponder over the Qur'an? Um, or are their hearts locked from ever understanding it? أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا الْقَوْلَ Allah says. Uh, do they not uh, reflect on ponder over the qawl, over Allah's words and Allah's statements. Because without pondering over the Qur'an, without reflecting on the meanings of the Qur'an, then the Qur'an cannot be a source of guidance for us. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ 
يهدي للتي يهدي للتي هي اقوى ان هذا القران يهدي للتي هي اقوى indeed this quran guides to that which is straight guides to the straight path as sirat al mustaqim so without reflecting on the quran the quran cannot be a source of guidance the only way the quran is a source of guidance for us is if we reflect on the meanings of the book of allah azza wa jal in fact allah azza wa jal he uh, mentions uh, and he he teaches us in the quran he tells us that those who can recite the quran um, but are unable to understand its meanings they these people are considered to be illiterate these people are considered to be people who are unable to read or even write allah azza wa jalla he says wa minhum ummiyuna la ya'lamun al-kitab illa amani and from them are ummiyun and a ummi al ummi huwa alladhi la yaqra wa la yaktub a ummi a person who's illiterate is a person who can neither who can uh, who a person who cannot understand what they're reading or they cannot even read so even if a person is able to read something some words and they are able to manifest the letters and pronounce the letters correctly however they are unable to understand and comprehend what they're reading then this person is considered to be an ummi an illiterate person so allah azza wa jal he says wa minhum ummiyuna la ya'lamuna al-kitaba illa amani and from these people are those people who are illiterate allah azza wa jal here is referring to the yahud so he says wa minhum ummiyun from them are ummiyun la ya'lamuna al-kitaba they are unable to comprehend the teachings of the book of allah azza wa jal illa qira'atan illa amani he huna amani means illa qira'atan amani jam'u umni and umni can mean has two meanings in the quran the first meaning is umni bima'na yani ma yatamannahu al-insan that which the person hopes for this is called the umni also umni can mean qira'a as well can mean recitation so here allah azza wa jal he says from these people are those who are unable to read or write even though they are able to read the words uh, they are able to uh, pronounce the letters of the quran correctly however they are if they they are unable to understand and comprehend these words so uh, that means they are illiterate and this is very important because nowadays we have uh, yani, you know many of us alhamdulillah it is the jarat al ada fi sunnat al muslimin an al walad aw an al tifl yabda awwal ma yabda bihi huwa ta'allum kitab Allah the ada and of the muslims uh, is and the sunnah of the muslims is that a, uh, a child the first thing that a child learns is the book of Allah azza wa jalla so children uh, go to a madrasa and in the madrasa they recite the book of Allah or they taught how to recite the book of Allah and this is a sunnatun hasana this is something that is uh, that came from the sahaba from the salaf from the tabi'in that atba'i tabi'in this is something that is beautiful and is encouraged at all times and in all eras and in all places however if this child grows up um, and this child once this child recites the quran and even memorizes the quran after they have grown up and after they've memorized the quran um and they've reached the age of puberty for example or reached the age of uh, 18 or 19 what happens then how do we make sure that our uh, youth remain firm on the book of allah azza wa jalla their recitation of the quran even if their taj- tajweed is impeccable and their tajweed is perfect how do we make sure that our youth remain firmly on the book of allah azza wa jalla the answer to this question is by teaching them the book of allah the meanings of the words that they're reciting so that they have a connection between themselves and the words of allah azza wa jalla if they're reading qul huwallahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad but they don't know the meaning of ahad and they don't know the meaning of as-samad then how can this surah prevent them from sinning and prevent them from uh even leaving the fold of his al-islam al-iyad billah because we live in times of 
fitan, where a person may wake up in the morning as a believer, and by the sunset, this person may be a disbeliever, billah, as the Prophet وسلم, mentioned in an authentic hadith. So that the, the hadaf and the objective of this lecture is to encourage the elders, to encourage parents, to encourage people who are uh, teachers at the madaris, to also focus and concentrate on teaching the children the tafsir or the meanings of some of the surah that they are reciting. By, for example, beginning with Qisar al-Mufassal or Juz Amma, for example, by teaching them what some of these verses mean, especially the, the verses that pertain to Allah's uh, lofty attributes, Allah's beautiful names, etc. So this is the hadith of this topic. Also, the, the aim and the objective of this lecture is to encourage us just before Ramadan, because in two weeks time, it will be Ramadan, the month of the Quran, in which all Muslims are encouraged to recite as much of the Quran as possible, because Ramadan is the month of the Quran. It is the month in which the Quran was revealed. The Jibreel, uh, the angel Jibreel used to study uh, and, and recite the Quran with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, in the last 10 days of Ramadan and in his final Ramadan on this earth in every night in Ramadan. So during this month of Ramadan, it is a month in which we should encourage ourselves to learn the meanings, not just recite the Quran, uh, lafzan, uh, but also to um, know the meanings of the Qur'an, the, uh, the verses of the Qur'an, so that we may be able to reflect on these verses. In fact, Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us in the Qur'an that the shaitan is so diligent in uh, distracting uh, the people, distracting even prophets and messengers from understanding and pondering over the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيٍ Allah says, we have not sent before you, O Muhammad, a messenger or a prophet, except illa idha tamanna, except that illa idha qara'a, yani except that when they recite, when they recite, alqa shaytan fi umniyatihi, the shaytan causes them to waswas and distracts them from their qira'a, from their recitation. So if the shaytan is doing this to prophets and messengers, then there is no doubt that the shaitan is trying to distract us from reciting the Qur'an, uh, from pondering and uh, reflecting on the Qur'an. So it's very important that we know what, uh, what it means to actually reflect and do tadabbur of the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal. So in this lecture, inshallah ta'ala, what we will be discussing is the difference and the relationship between tadabbur. Tadabbur is the Arabic word for, for reflection and pondering. And, uh, for example, tafsir, the relationship between tadabbur and al-fahm. How do we reflect on the Qur'an? What are the arkan and the pillars of a tadabbur? What are the pillars of reflecting on uh, the Qur'an? So firstly, um, uh, so firstly, what we need to understand is that uh, the meaning of a tadabburu, a tadabburu or tadabbara ya tadabburu, uh, it, it, it basically means to look at uh, الأمور, to look at the end result of everything so and and to look at the end result of everything uh, so التدبر means التأمل في معاني كتاب الله تعالى to reflect on the words of Allah عز وجل, to actually ponder and think of the words of Allah عز وجل. And this thinking and this tadabbur is something that happens in your heart. Um, and to, uh, to, to really think of what the, these words symbolize, what they mean, what Allah Azza wa is trying to, the meaning that Allah is trying to convey. Because at the end of the day, the book of Allah, when you open the Quran and you recite the Quran, these are the words of Rabbul Alameen. These are, لَيْسَ هَذَا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرِ this is not the, this isn't the words of a man. These are the words of Rabbul Alameen Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal is trying to tell you something in every ayah. So you have to find out what, what is Allah <coughs> trying to tell you. And this is basically the meaning of a tadabbur. As for the relationship between tadabbur and tafsir, 
then tafsir, the word tafsir means, linguistically means al kashfu al bayan. It means to reveal something, to expose something, to clarify something. This is the meaning of tafsir. And um, tafsir is a science that uh, studies the Quran al Karim, the Quran uh, from uh, يعني, the, the, the Dilala of the Kitab of Allah, the, uh, the, the meanings and the, uh, the, what the verses of the Book of Allah indicate to what Allah intends by these verses. This is, the, the, this is what tafsir, tafsir, the science of Tafsir, looks at. So what we can say between the alaqa and the relationship between tafsir and tadabbur is that we can say that between them is what's known in the Arabic language as mulazama, which basically means that each one needs the other. That tadabbur needs tafsir and tafsir needs tadabbur. Uh, that's, what, that's because uh, tafsir is the end result of tadabbur. Tafsir is the end result usually of tadabbur. So once the mufassir reflects on the meanings of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, then that's when they pre then, then that's when tafsir occurs and tafsir happens. It's very important that um, that the tafsir of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal has to conform with the tafsir uh, of the salaf of the, the sahaba, the tabi'un, the atba'u tabi'in. So if I reflect on the meanings of a, a verse, for example, then this reflection and this pondering, um, I should always uh, refer back to what the Sahaba and what the Salaf, what the Mufassirun said about this particular verse I am pondering. And if my reflection of this verse and my pondering over this verse conforms to what they also said, then this is khair and this is alhamdulillah jayid. This is what we're, this is a ni'mah and a blessing. If it doesn't, then usahihu mafhumi and I correct my understanding of the verse by seeking knowledge and by learning the tafsir of this particular verse. So tadabbur basically um, uh, only occurs after you've understood the verse and you have basically a general understanding of what the verse entails. As for the relationship between tafsir and al-fahm, then uh, al-fahm or understanding is tasawwurul ma'na, min Allah, to, 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 to picture the meaning of the verse. So for example, um, if for example, when Allah Azza wa Jal says, مثلاً, Ya ayuhal ladheena mathalan um the verse uh, ya ayuhal ladheena amanu idha tadayantum bi daynin ila ajalin musamman faktubuhu mathalan this verse here Allah azza wa jal is discussing he's talking about um a dayn he's he's talking about the importance of recording uh lease contract or the importance of recording sorry debt contracts if you if you're in debt with someone or someone uh, or or you intend to borrow some money from someone, then you should record, record it. This is what the verse, this is Zahirul Ayah. This is what the verse is saying. طيب? So if you have, to, if you want to do Tadabbur Mathalan, and you want to reflect on this verse, then uh, you, يعني tadabbur, uh, يعني you can reflect on the how the Sharia and for example, the Islam um, and the legislator uh, protects the wealth of uh, of people, how the how Islam came to protect the wealth of people, because when someone records, uh, when you record your debt contracts, then and the Quran is encouraging us to record the debt contracts. Then you may ask yourself, why? Why is Allah Azza wa commanding us to record and to write our debt contracts? What is the purpose? What is the hikmah? So you may come to the conclusion that this is to preserve wealth. This is to also. Um, Avoid to to avoid so that people you know yeah so that uh, uh, يعني, people do not uh, for example um, uh, quarrel with each other over wealth for example or there's no disputes or to avoid any uh, future disputes for example um, so that the ukhu and the brotherhood and the sisterhood in the community prevails so this could be a reason this is tadabbur and يعني, you've if you have, if these meanings and all of these ma'ani, 
if they enter your mind, for example, when you're reciting this verse, then this is no tadabbur, and this is right, and there is, يعني, this conforms to maqasid al-shari'ah, it conforms to the overall objective of the sharia, which is hifdul mal, which is to preserve wealth. So this is just an example of tadabbur in this particular verse. Um, so uh, you won't be able to do tadabbur of this verse, if you don't, if you don't have a general understanding of the verse, so for example, ya ladina amru ida tadayan tum bidaynin ila ajalin musamman faktubuhu. You won't be able to understand this if you don't have a general understanding of the verse. If you if you don't understand the words, for example, if you for example have no, if you can't understand the Arabic language, for example, you won't be able to do any tadabbur unless you have some understanding of the Arabic language. And even for those brothers and sisters who may think and say, but I don't understand the Arabic language. Um, what, what, what can I do? I don't understand the Arabic language. So what can I do? How can I make tadabbur? The answer is firstly, learn the Arabic language. Alhamdulillah. Yani, don't become ajiz. Don't become lazy. Uh, learn the Arabic language. Go and sign up to a course and learn the Arabic language. Because if you strive to learn the Arabic language and your goal is to understand the book of Allah Azza wa for every minute, for every second that you spend learning the Arabic language, then you are in ibadah, you're in a worship, you're in worship. If um, you, for example, while you're st studying the Arabic language, you want to do tadabbur, then my advice is firstly, um, start with qisar al-mufassal, start with the short surahs. You know, so the, so the surahs in the last chapter, chapter 30, um, and Juz Amma, for example, and, and pick up a, a translation of the Quran and start to read this translation. Alhamdulillah, there are many, uh, you know, good translations out there. Pick one of them, inshallah ta'ala, read it, and um, it, it will not obviously be able to do the translation, won't be able to do justice to the actual. Arabic meanings, la shaka fi dhalika. However, uh, it's better than nothing. And then, inshallah ta'ala, once you recite a surah, amma yatasa'aloon, for example, anil naba il azim alladhi hum fi, this verse, for example, and you read the meanings in English, um, the next time you hear the verse um, or this surah being recited, then this will aid you in doing uh, a tadabbur. Tayyib. So, the importance of tadabbur is, is, as we mentioned earlier, is summarized in the verse in the statement of Allah Azza wa where He says, "Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadakkara ulu albab." Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Kitabun a book anzalnahu ilayka that we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, mubarakun." And then Allah mentions another description of this book: a mubarak, kitabun mubarak, a book that is blessed. يعني كثير البركة كثير الخير a book that has a lot of blessings because for every single verse that you read you have an ajr and reward for every single harf rather for every single harf for every letter that you recite then Allah Azza wa Jal reports for you at least 10 good deeds كثرة الخير يعني there's baraka in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal acting in accordance with the, to the book of Allah acting upon it gives you barakah in your life. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says Mubarakun and Liyadabbaru. Yani the reason why Allah revealed the Quran was so that you may reflect on it. Imagine brothers and sisters picking up a book in maths or picking up a book in geography or science or any other fun or any other any book, history book, and you're reading the words, yet you do not understand what you're reading people would consider you to be majnoon and insane. People would consider you to be someone who is insane. How can you read a book and you don't understand it? And what would happen? Would you continue reading this book? No, you would just put it down. After a while, you'd get bored of it. This is why, khwani wa akhawati, Allah Azza wa Jal, he tells us here in this surah, in this verse, that he revealed the Quran so that it may, people may reflect on it. People may ponder 
over the Quran. Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin al in Adwa Al-Bayan, he says in this ayah, yani commenting on this verse, he says, وَأَمَّا كَوْنُ تَدَبُّرِ آيَاتِهِ مِنْ حِكَمِ إِنزَالِهِ He says, as for the تَدَبُّرُ آيَاتِهِ with regards to reflect, reflecting on the, on the verses of the Qur'an, that it is one of the wisdoms behind its revelation, then Allah Azza wa Jal, He indicates to this in some verses. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَتَوْبِيخِ مَنْ لَمْ يَتَدَبَّرْهَا Allah Azza wa Jal, he rebukes and he chastises those people who do not ponder over the book of Allah. Such as, he says, ta'ala, such as the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَخْفَالُهَا The verse that we mentioned earlier. And the verse, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِي اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا And also the verse, أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا الْقَوْلَ أَمْ جَاءَهُمْ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِ آبَاءَهُمُ الْأَوَّلِينَ All these verses uh, command us to pondering and reflecting over the book of Allah. So one of the also virtues, some of from the virtues of tadabbur is that a tadabbur is considered to be from the greatest of righteous actions. أفضل القربات Reflecting on the book of Allah Azza wa Jal is from the greatest of virtues. Allah Azza the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that from the, from, the, from the people, from the seven types of people who will be shaded on the day of resurrection by the, uh, by, yeah, from the, from the shadow, from the sun and will be shaded by the shade of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا ففاضت عيناه. A man who remembered Allah, a man who was in seclusion, no eyes are upon him. There is nothing, يعني, no one else can see him except Allah. فذكر Allah and he remembered Allah. And as a result, ففاضت عيناه. He became tearful. He became tearful. So this person, this man, he only became tearful because he remembered Allah Azza wa Jal. And how can you, when you remember Allah Azza wa Jal, you remember Allah Azza wa Jal, you remember His mercy. You remember Allah's uh, majesty. You remember Allah's descriptions. And you remember His names. Where are His names and descriptions? La shaka fi dhalika, they are in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you have no knowledge of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, and you, have, you, can, you don't understand the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, how will your eyes be, be how will you be able to uh, reflect and how will your eyes be tearful because your eyes will only be tearful يعني, if you know if you truly know Allah Azza wa Jal Ibn Rajab uh, Al-Hambali Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said وَمِنْ أَعْظَمِ مَا يُتَقَرَّبُ بِهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنَ النَّوَافِلِ كَثْرَةُ تِلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَسَمَاعِهِ بِتَفَكُّرْ وَتَدَبُّرْ وَتَفَهُمْ He says that from the greatest means to come close to Allah Azza wa Jal from the voluntary deeds is, is reciting the Quran often, listening to the Quran often, thinking of the Quran and reflecting over the Quran and understanding the Quran. And one of the Sahaba, Khabab ibn al Arat radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said to a man, Taqarrab ila Allah mastata'at. You can come to you can always try to come close to Allah as much as you wish. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ لَن تَتَقَرَّبَ إِلَيْهِ بِشَيْءٍ هُوَ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ But know that you will never ever be able to come close to Allah Azza wa Jal with anything more beloved than His words. يعني Allah Azza wa Jal, if you want to come close to Allah and you want to draw near to Allah Azza wa Jal, then the, the best means to do this is by reciting the book of Allah Azza wa Jal with tadabbur through reflection. Tadabbur, one of from the fawaid and the benefits of tadabbur is that through tadabbur, tadabbur will instill in you certainty and yaqeen and it will increase you in iman. The more you reflect and ponder over the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, the more your iman increases and the more certainty you have of the, uh, the, the truthfulness and the honesty and the 
يعني of of this message, the message of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. Also, from the benefits of tadabbur is that tadabbur is the only way that you will act in accordance to the Quran. How can we, because the Quran obviously we have to act upon it, we can't just recite it, we have to act upon it. How can we act upon the Quran if we don't know what it contains, if we don't reflect on the Quran, if we don't reflect on the awamir, ma'murat al-Quran, all of the commandments of the Quran, the nawahi, the prohibitions of the Quran, the qasas, the stories of the Quran. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَبِالْجُمْلَةِ فَلَا شَيْءَ أَنْفَعُ لِلْقَلْبِ مِنْ قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ بِالتَّدَبُّرِ وَالتَّفَكُّرِ he says, generally speaking, there is nothing more beloved to the heart. Uh, sorry, there is nothing more um, beneficial to the heart than reciting the Quran through reflection, through tadabbur, through tafakkur. And then he says, فَإِنَّهُ جَامِعٌ لِجَمِيعِ مَنَازِلِ السَّائِرِينَ وَأَحْوَالِ الْعَامِلِينَ وَمَقَامَاتِ الْعَارِفِينَ وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُورِثُ الْمَحَبَّةَ وَالشَّوْقِ Because this encompasses the path of those ibad, those servants that are closest to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this uh, instills in us, he says, this uh, reflecting on the Quran, uh, uh, yearning for Allah Azza wa Jal and the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Al-Khawf instills in us uh, the fear of Allah, al-Raja, hoping for Allah's mercy, al-Inaba, it instills in our hearts um, tawbah, yani to make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal from our sins, to tawakkul, to place our trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, every, or shukr, as sabr everything, every type of ibadah that you can think of, if you don't ponder over the Quran, you will always be deficient in this ibadah. If you want your iman to increase, ponder over the Quran. If you want your to be more grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal for, many, for his many blessings, then ponder and reflect over the Quran. If you want your salah to be to pray in khushur and to pray uh, with khushur and with all and with awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal, then ponder over the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. If you want to have more fear of Allah, then reflect and ponder over the Quran. More hope for Allah, reflect and ponder over the Quran. If you want to uh, make sure that you continuously make tawbah and repent to Allah Azza wa Jal for your many sins, then ponder over the Qur'an and reflect over the Qur'an. And then he says, Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says, he says, فَلَوْ عَلِمَ النَّاسُ مَا فِي قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ بِالتَّدَبُّرِ لَشْتَغَلُوا بِهَا عَنْ كُلِّ مَا سِوَاهَا He says, if people knew, if people knew the benefits of reciting the Qur'an with tadabbur, then they would have busied themselves and they would have in, and they would have busied themselves with the recitation of the Quran, and they would not have become distracted from it. For إذا قرأه بتفكر حتى مر بآية وهو محتاج إليها في شفاء قلبه كررها ولو مئة مرة ولو ليلة. Then he says, and then he he says that if he recites a verse, uh, with uh, if he recites a verse. And he thinks about this verse. And he, he needs this verse. إِلَيْهَا He needs this ayah and this verse to cure the disease that's in his heart. He should repeat this verse often. And he should repeat it even for a hundred times. He should even continue repeating this verse the whole night. And this was the sunnah of the salaf. This was the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu they used to repeat a verse hundreds of times, thousands of times the whole night. Um, نعم. And then he says, فَقِرَاءَةُ آيَةٍ بِتَفَكُّرٍ وَتَفَهُّمٍ خَيْرٌ مِنْ قِرَاءَةِ خَتْمَةٍ بِغَيْرِ تَدَبُّرٍ وَتَفَهُّمٍ He says, reciting one verse with tafakkur by pondering, truly pondering, and reflecting over this verse, understanding the verse is more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal is better than reciting the whole of the Quran from it from Surah to Surah Al Fatiha to Surah An Nas without any tadabbur or tafahum. Think about this, brothers. What he just said: reciting one verse with tadabbur, 
with tafakkur, with tafahum, reciting one verse, with reflecting, with reflection, with pondering, by understanding the verse, is better than reciting the whole of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal without any tadabbur, without any faham, without any understanding. Subhanallah. And then he says, هذا أصل لصلاح القلب. He says this is the only way that the heart will become rectified. And then he says, ولهذا أنزل الله القرآن ليتدبر ويتفكر فيه ويعمل به لا لمجرد الإعراض عنه. He says, and this is why he says that the Quran was revealed in order for us to reflect on it. In fact, brothers and sisters, the person who doesn't reflect on the Quran, doesn't understand, doesn't make an effort to understand the book of Allah Azzawajal, then this person has partially uh, boycotted and has partially rejected the Quran. عنه. Allah Azzawajal, he says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ, the messenger says, يَا قَوْمِ on, in the day of resurrection, a messenger will complain to Allah Azza wa Jal about some of his people. And he says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ The messenger says, يَا رَبِّ أَوْ Lord, إِنَّ قَوْمِ Indeed my people, اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا They have boycotted this Qur'an. They have abandoned this Qur'an. So if, you, if we do not uh, reflect on the Qur'an, then we have partially abandoned the Qur'an, even if we recite the Qur'an. Even if we recite the Qur'an often. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions this as عدم uh, التدبر He says من هجران كتاب الله تعالى It is considered to be from the hujran from يعني, boycotting and abandoning the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. طيب So we move on to the next topic which is أركان التدبر What are the pillars of tadabbur? So tadabbur has three pillars The first pillar is المتدبر The person who's doing tadabbur the one reflecting, the qari, the reciter of the Qur'an. And this person needs to have certain, needs to come with certain conditions. And they have, there has to be some, uh, ops, yani for this person to indeed become someone who truly reflects on the Qur'an, then this person has to come with certain conditions that we will mention, inshallah ta'ala, soon. And this person has to have certain adab and certain etiquettes certain uh, etiquettes uh, يعني, in order for them to, uh, to, to make, to benefit as much as possible from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's the first rukun, the first pillar. The second pillar is al-kalam al-mutadabbur, the words that are being reflected. The words that are being, and these are the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. And there is no doubt that the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, the whole book of Allah Azza wa Jal, is mu'athir, it affects the person. Um, and the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal, he described it as easy to read, easy to understand, as he says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ الذِّكْرَ And we have indeed made it easy and simplified the understanding of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, however, there are certain uh, places in the Qur'an or certain verses in the Qur'an that have more of an effect than others. So for example, the verses that speak about Allah's power, His majesty, such as Ayatul Kursi, have more power and more effect than, for example, uh, the verses that speak about certain ahkam, for example, certain uh, rulings, such as uh, transactions, etc. Although all of them are beneficial, some have more benefit than others. So if, for example, you find that certain surahs in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal affect you more than others, then you should uh, uh, basically uh, recite these surahs more often. So if مثلا سورة الواقعة, إذا وقعت الواقعة affects you more than مثلا سورة مثلا هود, then سورة الواقعة, يعني you should make more effort in re repeating these surahs. And these ayat and these that basically uh, affect you more than, than the others. Now, um, the third pillar is the amaliyat at tadabbur. Um, the actual um, act 
the third pillar is the actual act of uh, reflecting of, of the Quran. Um, and there, this act of reflecting on the Quran, the, يعني, it is uh, done in a certain manner, uh, in, this, in the sense that uh, يعني, you have to make sure that you use, uh, that you, and there are certain times of the day, for example, that uh, tadabbur or the reflection of the Quran is encouraged more than others. For example, at, at night, it's encouraged more often, and we'll, get, we'll, we'll mention this more, inshallah ta'ala, soon. Also, with regards to uh, the يعني, the hay'a, how you are, your hal when you are making tadabbur, so you should be upon wudu, you should be in a place that's tahir, a place that's pure. If, for example, you are in a masjid, um, يعني, it may, your it may, tadabbur may be better in certain instances, in certain seasons as well, for example, in Ramadan. In the last 10 nights of Ramadan, for example, doing tadabbur in the last 10 nights of Ramadan is more beneficial for the heart than doing tadabbur in other nights of, in, in, in normal nights. Um, so, uh, as the, the Prophet Sallallahu also, the miqdar and the amount that you are reciting affects tadabbur as well. So, if you're reciting quickly, um, يعني, and يعني you're reciting the Quran quite quickly, then this will affect your tadabbur. But if you recite the Quran slowly, with gentleness, with ease, without rushing, then this will aid you in tadabbur. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَمْ يَفْقَهْ مَنْ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ فِي أَقَلِّ مِنْ ثَلَاثِ Whoever recites the Quran, the whole of the Quran, completes the whole of the Quran in less than three nights, then this person has not understood the Quran. طيب. So what are the conditions for... Uh, tadabbur. What are the conditions for your tadabbur and your reflection to be uh, beneficial, to become more beneficial? Number one is wujud al-mahal al-qabil. There has to be tadabbur only occurs in a specific part of your body. And that morsel of flesh is called the heart. So if your heart is hay, is alive with a iman, with faith, then tadabbur you will benefit from tadabbur. So the more alive your heart is, the more iman that you have, the more beneficial tadabbur becomes for you. Um, Abdullah ibn Umm, in fact, subhanAllah, without iman, without faith, tadabbur is, يعني, reflecting on the Quran, uh, won't uh, really be of benefit. It won't be of benefit. Um, and tadabbur becomes beneficial if you have iman, if you have faith. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, لَقَدْ عِشْنَا بُرْهَةً مِنْ دَهْرِنَا He said, we lived um, for a while. وَإِنَّ أَحَدَنَا يُؤْتَى يُؤْتَى الْإِيمَانِ قَبْلَ الْقُرْآنِ He says, when we lived for a, in a period of time where one of us would be given faith, iman, before the Qur'an, قبل القرآن. وَتَنْزِلَ الصُّورَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم. And the surah, a surah, a chapter is revealed upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَنَتَعَلَّمُ حَلَالَهَا وَحَرَامَهَا And we would learn it's halal and haram. وَأَمْرِهَا وَزَاجِرِهَا We would learn its commandments and prohibitions. وَمَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَقِفَ عِنْدَهُ مِنْهَا And he says, كَمَا, تع... كما, تعل... كما ت... تَعَلَّمُونَ أَنْتُمُ الْيَوْمَ الْقُرْآنِ He says, we, just like you learn the Quran today. Then he says, ثُمَّ لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ الْيَوْمَ رِجَالًا And today he says, I see men يُؤْتَى حَدُهُمُ الْقُرْآنَ قَبْلَ الْإِيمَانِ These men are given the Qur'an before Iman. فَيَقْرَأْ مَا بَيْنَ فَاتِحَتِهِ إِلَى خَاتِمَتِهِ مَا يَدْرِي مَا آمِرُهُ وَلَا زَاجِرُهُ وَلَا مَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَقِفْ عِنْدَهُ مِنْهُ So he recites, he recites this, these men recite the whole of the Qur'an, but they don't understand anything in the Qur'an. And he's amazed at this, that there are people that recite the Qur'an, but they don't know what is actually in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. This author is narrated by Al-Hakim fi Al-Mustadra. Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Inna qawmun utin al-iman qabla an nu'ta al-Qur'an. He says, we are a people who were taught iman, faith, before we were taught the Qur'an. Wa innakum, as for you, people, he's talking to the tabi'een, you were given the Qur'an before you were given Iman. Subhanallah. 
So what do we understand from this? We understand from this that a person has to have Iman before the Qur'an. You may ask yourself and say, yes, but do we not benefit from the Qur'an Iman? Isn't, the, isn't if we read the Qur'an, then that's when we will benefit Iman and faith. The answer is yes. The Qur'an, if you recite the Qur'an, as Allah says, مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانُ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا when Allah Azza wa Jal, he says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يعني ما كنت تدري, you didn't know what the book was, ولا, and, and what Iman was, however we made this Qur'an as a source of light and guidance and knowledge for you. What the, there's no contradiction. There's no taraqud here. What the Sahaba are referring to is that they were taught the importance of the Qur'an. They were taught they already revered the Qur'an. They already had, uh, the Qur'an in their hearts was something that was, uh, that, that was majestic. And as a result of this, as a result of being around the Prophet ﷺ, they already had Iman, Amanu Bihi. So once they had Iman and they were convinced of its authenticity, its integrity, the fact that everything in it is haqq and uh, there is no batil in it, then they started learning the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And as a result of learning the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, their Iman increased even more. Right? Their Iman increased even more. There are certain mushrikeen um, that accepted Islam in the time of the Prophet وسلم, as a result of listening to the Quran, such as Jubair ibn Mut'im. Um, when he heard the verses, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in amhumul khaliqun, he said, Kadat qalbi an yatir. When he heard this verse, the verse in Surah Tutur, he said, my heart nearly, uh, uh, it, it, my heart nearly flew away. He was so amazed by the beauty and the eloquence of the Quran. And then he accepted Islam. So this Jubair ibn Mut'im, Allah Azza wa Jal, through his rahmah and his karam and generosity, Allah willed that these verses affect him because he knew what they meant. He didn't do tadabbur. He didn't sit there thinking of these verses. He just heard them and he understood their, their, their magnificence and he understood what they meant. So as a result of this, then he accepted Islam afterwards. Right? But generally speaking, you need to have iman and faith before the Quran. So in our madaris, in our madrasa, when we teach our kids and we teach our children the book of Allah, Azza, we should first make sure that... Um, they understand the importance of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. In, in some madaris, for example, when children take the mushaf, the, the Quran, to the madrasa, you see how they, some of them, they don't even, they're not even taught to respect the mushaf. So you see them putting the mushaf on the floor, for example, or you see them, for example, putting the mushaf in their, in their bag or in a carrier bag, for example, and this carrier bag, they start to hit each other with it and they start to throw the carrier bag on the floor. So it's upon the, it's upon the, Parents, first and foremost, and it's also upon their teachers to make sure that they understand that what they're carrying are the words of their creator. Yeah, and what they're carrying, what they're reciting are the words of their creator. So this is the iman that they're referring to, the sahaba referring to. And this is the iman and the, yeah, and that we should instill in our children's hearts. And then we teach them the book of Allah. So this is the first condition. Um, the second condition is... Um, is basically pertaining to the actions of the person who is uh, doing tadabbur. And these actions, the person who's doing tadabbur can do tadabbur through listening to the Qur'an or through recitation of the Qur'an, okay? Through listening to the, to the Qur'an or through the recitation of the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal. As for listening to the Qur'an, then um, Allah Azza wa Jal, He encourages us, and in fact, He commands us to listen attentively to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Qur'an is being recited, then listen attentively to it, um, so that you may be, وَأَنْصِتُوا and be silent, so that you may, you may be, um, so that you know mercy may encompass you so that Allah may have mercy upon you 
So reciting the Quran, uh, listening to the Quran attentively, um, and uh, listening to the Quran يعني, with uh, uh, with insight and attentively is a cause for Allah's mercy to descend upon you. Subhanallah. And when you listen to the Quran, this is when tadabbur happens. When you listen to the Quran, whether you're in the salah, whether you're listening to a tape, for example, listening to the Quran, understanding the words is a cause for, is a means of doing tadabbur. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, one of the famous uh, ulama, يعني, السابقين, he used to say, awwalu al-ilmi al-istima. He used to say, awwalu al-ilm al-istima, thumma al-fahm, thumma al-hif, thumma al-amal, thumma al nash He says that knowledge begins with listening. Knowledge first begins with listening. And then understanding. And then memorizing. And then acting upon it. And then uh, propagating it to others. And teaching it to others. These are, these are the turuq. So knowledge always begins with listening. Not speaking. When you're, when you're with your teacher, then first listen to your teacher. Before you say anything, just listen. Once you listen, then you understand. Once you understand, then you memorize. Once you memorize, then you act in accordance to what you've un- memorized and understood and listened to. And then finally, you go and propagate this and teach it to others. This is in al bayhaqi fi al-Shu'ab. So as for, so that's what listening. As for reciting the Qur'an, then recitation of the Qur'an is also another path to tadabbur, another path to reflecting on the Qur'an. Um, so the qari, the one reciting the Qur'an, then this person is going to benefit from their recitation of the Qur'an by doing a few things first. Number one, at by preparing yourself to recite the Qur'an. And this is basically by first being upon purity yourself. So make sure that you have wudu. That's number one. Number two, make sure you're wearing clothes that are proper. You're wearing proper attire. Your, your, the clothes that, are your, your, that you're wearing are pure clothes. Clothes that have no najasa and impurity upon them. Also, the place that you're reciting the Quran upon, where you're sitting, has to be a pure place. <clears throat> and it's encouraged for you to be in a place free from any distractions. And when you're reciting the Quran, make sure you're not distracted by your phone. Make sure, for example, you, it's better and always, if possible, to switch your phone off. To for that portion, that hour you, that you're reciting the Quran or that half an hour that you're reciting the Quran, then hide your phone from your eyes so that if someone calls you, for example, you're not tempted to pick up the phone or respond to any text messages, etc. Also, choose the best time to recite the Quran. And there is no doubt that the best time to recite the Quran is at night. This is as Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ نَاشِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشَدُّ وَطْأً وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا Ibn Abbas, he says, meaning that the meaning of وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا is this, at night time, is the best time to understand the Qur'an. At night. Um, especially the last portion of the night. Also, um, uh, you, you need to basically um, un- make sure that um, when you're basically reciting the Quran, that you're not tempted. It's always better, best to be alone when you're reciting the Quran. It's always best. It's, this is better for your sincerity and for your ikhlas. Nowadays, subhanAllah, we find people posting on social media every, and every time they recite the Quran, and this intimate moment between themselves and Allah Azza wa Jal, you see them posting this, recording themselves and then posting it on social media. So that people can say, MashaAllah, how beautiful your voice is, etc., etc. This obsession with being recognized, this obsession with being, with sharing everything with, the, with people, everything that you do, even your ibadat, this is the greatest threat to your tadabbur of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because remember, when you're reciting the Quran, this is an intimate moment between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. Why would you want to share this moment with other people? Isn't it enough for you that Allah Azza wa Jal is looking at you? Isn't it enough that Allah Azza wa Jal knows that you're reciting the Quran? Isn't Allah's praise and his pleasure? Isn't it enough for you? Why do you need the praise and the pleasure of other people? Why do you need to share this with other people? Some people, subhanAllah, you see, especially some Qurra, Allah Yahdihim, 
you see them, for example, when they're giving, uh, when they're, uh, for example, when they're leading the people in tahajjud or in taraweeh or even in the normal prayers, there's a camera right in front of them, subhanAllah. There's a camera that's literally in front of them. And this camera is zooming into their face. So you can even see, you can see their, يعني, you can see their sweat and you can see their, their, their intimate movements of their lips, their face, their khushu' subhanallah. And uh, يعني, subhanallah, this is ajeeb jiddan. يعني. Aren't these people, are they afraid of falling into riyah? يعني, allowing people to see their face when they are in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, this intimate moment, subhanallah. Isn't it enough to put the camera at the back to see the back of their face? Why do we need to see their faces? Subhanallah. You see some some people, for example, they could they post on social media. They, uh, يعني, they they may be alone, for example, in their car driving, for example, and they're reciting the Quran, for example, and then they record this moment. What you know them themselves reciting the Quran, and then they post this. Subhanallah. This is not from the this this is not from the sunnah of our righteous predecessors. Yani, our righteous predecessors, subhanallah, um, uh, Sa'id ibn Jubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one day he was sitting with his companions and he said, Ayyukum ra'al kawkab al bariha. He said to them, which of you last night saw the shooting star? Which of you saw in the sky the shooting star? And one of them, one of, one of his companions, he said, uh, I saw the shooting star. Anna, he said. And then he quickly said, Ama inni lam akun fi ludikht. He said, I wasn't praying. Don't think I was praying. Qiyamul Layl. The only reason I saw it is because I was bitten by a crab. And the, the pain kept me up all night. Why did he even, why did he have to say this? His ikhlas and sincerity prevented him from allowing them to think that he was in Qiyamul Layl. He was praying at night. That's why he was able to see the shooting star. This is the difference between them and us. Whereas we are obsessed with uh, advertising and propagating everything that we do. Every salah that we pray, we need to tell people. Every Monday that we fast, we have the need and to propagate this. We are obsessed with people knowing everything about us. Every uh, uh, يعني, recitation of the Quran, the amount that we've memorized, what we've done, we are obsessed with letting people know. We need to get out of this habit because unfortunately we live in an era where the era of social media, with the era of sharing, where everyone shares everything. Everyone shares the, even their children's, uh, the clothes that their children wear, their food, etc. So your tadabbur is always linked to your ikhlas and sincerity, subhanAllah. And it's well documented that if you have, if your ikhlas, if you, have, if you don't have, sin, if you're not sincere for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, then your, your eyes will never become tearful for the, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And even if they do, then these are tears that are not uh, genuine. Your tadabbur will always be deficient. Because you're not doing it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. These are things that are in the heart. Only Allah can see them Azza wa Jal. No one can come to you and advise you and say to you, Akhi, Taqillah, don't show off. That's why riya and showing off is one of the greatest sins. This is why the Prophet said, Akhwaf ma akhafu alaykum al shirk al asr He says that my, the, I fear for you most al shirk al asr minor sin. And when he was asked about minor sins, he said, showing off because no one can advise you every other sin that's 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 apparent people can advise you if you're if, if you if someone stops praying for example people can see he stopped praying so they'll come and advise him if you if someone starts to smoke cigarettes people can advise him if someone for example uh, starts to well, billah, يعني, do certain like drinks alcohol or something, people can see so they can advise him. But when you show off, no one can advise you. No one can come up to you and say to you, Akhi, fear Allah, stop showing off. No one can ever say that to you because they don't know what's in your heart. And that's why Riyah 
is extremely difficult. Yeah, is, 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 is a grave sin and ikhlas is extremely difficult to achieve. It's one of the highest stations to achieve. So why would we make something that's already very difficult? Why would we make it even more difficult upon us by sharing our worship, by sharing our recitation, by sharing our salah? Keep it to yourself and Allah Azza wa Jal and suffice and be suff- suffice with the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal is aware of your actions. So it's very important that you uh, observe these etiquettes when making tadabbur. Also, um, uh, with regards to um, from the etiquettes is that you uh, remove all distractions from yourself. Before you start reciting the Quran, you remove all distractions from yourself. And likewise from the etiquettes is to begin with, with al-isti'ada. To begin with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim before reciting the Quran. Um, and Ibn al Qayyim actually mentions eight benefits for Al Isti'adha. For those of you who are would like to uh, know what these eight benefits are, then I advise you to go back to Miftah Dar al Sa'adah where he mentions these eight benefits. The third and final condition for tadabbur or to benefit from tadabbur is that you need to have a portion of some understanding of the words so that you can benefit from them. So you need to have, know Arabic. So you need to know Arabic as mentioned before. If you don't know Arabic, then at least go, go back to the translation so that you know what these words actually mean. And then you can, inshallah ta'ala, do tadabbur. Also, make sure if you are someone who seeks knowledge continuously, you're someone who seeks the knowledge of aqidah, knowledge of tawheed, knowledge of fiqh, then all of these, you will pick up skills and abilities, inshallah ta'ala, through your seeking of knowledge that will enable you, inshallah ta'ala, and give you the ability to actually seek, uh, to actually do a uh, tadabbur and reflect on the Qur'an. And Imam al-Shaqiti, he says, فَإِذَا عَلِمْتَ أَيُّهَا الْمُسْلِمَ أَنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمُ هُوَ النُّورُ الذي أنزله الله ليستضاء به ويهتدى بهداه في أرضه فكيف ترضى لبصيرتك أن تعمى عن النور He says, if you know, O Muslim, that this Quran is the light in which Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed that and, and this light, we use this light to illuminate our path for us and so that we may be guided on this earth, then how can you be pleased and how can you uh, be, be satisfied that you are blind from this light, that you don't, you can't see it? Can you imagine, brothers? We know the Quran is light. The more tadabbur you do, the more you will get light that you will get. So how can we be satisfied? How can you be satisfied for not being able to understand the book of Allah Azza wa Jal? Finally, inshallah ta'ala, the last portion of the lecture is just to mention uh, that the Tadabbur or some examples of tadabbur. So first will be the first type of tadabbur um, is t- a tadabbur that encourages uh, action. A tadabbur that encourages you to act in accordance to what you read. Um, this is known as a tadabbur al-amali, the tadabbur of action. Allah, and an example of this is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاصْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلتَّقْوَى Allah Azza wa says in Surah Taha وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ Command your family and your, command your family to pray وَاصْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا and uh, persevere and be patient upon this salah لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا Allah says we don't ask you for provisions for sustenance نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُ we will provide for you Allah says and the end victory is for taqwa. So um, some of the salaf, Ibn Juzzi, he says in his tafsir, Ibn Juzzi, sorry, he says in his tafsir, كان بعض السلف إذا أصاب أهله خصاصة قال قوموا فصلوا. He says that some of the salaf, some of our righteous predecessors, when they were afflicted with a loss of wealth, with poverty, with with a year of uh, barrenness, for example, they would say to their family, Umu, stand up, fasallu, and pray. 
this is what your Lord has commanded you. And then they will recite this verse. Because in this verse, Allah Azza wa commands us to pray. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, we will provide for you. Which basically, so Allah has made a connection between risk, sustenance, and the prayer. <clears throat> which means <clears throat> that the prayer, so Allah doesn't tell us here in the verse that prayer uh, is a means to sustenance. But Allah, he implies this. And through tadabbur, al-amali, through tadabbur, the salaf, they came to the conclusion that the salah, if a person prays a lot, then this person, Allah Azza wa Jal, will uh, provide for them wealth, will, will, will sustain them, will give them sustenance, etc. So this is an example of a tadabbur al-amali. The second type of a tadabbur is known as another fil kawn. And this tadabbur is a, the, the tadabbur or the reflection of uh, observing, the observing the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. So an example of this is the verse of Allah, where, is the ayah where Allah says in Surah Al-Ghashiyah, فَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَ Do they not look and do they not ponder over the, 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 the camel, how it was created? So Allah is encouraging us to look at the camel and that the camel and to use the camel as proof of the exist, not only of the existence of Allah Azza wa Jal, but as proof of the power of Allah Azza wa Jal, how he created this, this creature, this beautiful creature that can go for months and weeks without water, subhanAllah, in the most in the hottest parts of the earth. Yeah, and how is this even so? The desert, the barren desert, the, the camel can go for so long without water. And some of the salaf, like Shuraik al Qadi, he used to say, Let's go to the desert So that we may look at the camel How it was created And we look at the the, sama, the the sky How it was raised and elevated So this is basically an example of a tadabbur And this tadabbur everyone can do Tadabbur isn't something that's only specific to ulama and to scholars Tadabbur is for all Muslims Every Muslim can do tadabbur, can reflect on the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. So bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, brothers and sisters, naqif inda hadha al-had, we'll stop here bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us of those who uh, reflect on the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma aj'al al-Qur'an rabi'a qulubina, wa nura absarina, wa jala'a ahzanina, wa dhahaba humumina, wa humumina. اللهم أتنا ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار والحمد لله والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نعم